The early war Mitsubishi A6M 2B Model 21-0 was an aircraft defined by a fundamental contradiction. On one hand, it possessed extraordinary range and maneuverability that gave it near total dominance in the early Pacific War. But it also carried a fatal vulnerability of a complete lack of armor and self-sealing fuel tanks. This raises a compelling engineering question. What if that core design philosophy had been altered in favor of survivability? In this video, the proposed modifications are specific. We added 12.7 mm thick plate behind the pilot that contributes an extra 60 kilograms. Armor plating for the engine adds another 30 kilograms. The most substantial change is 120 kilograms for self-sealing fuel tanks. From normal firing distance of 150 meters, these are enough to stop regular 50 cal ball round or deflect an angled armor piercing round. The total weight penalty is 210 kilograms. For an aircraft prized for its lightness and agility, the consequences are immediate and noticeable. First, let's examine the direct impact on flight performance. Max speed of an up-armored Zero drops from 533 kilometers per hour to 503 kilometers per hour, eroding its edge in engagement and disengagement. Its strategic combat range is reduced from 3,100 kilometers to 2,500 kilometers. In a dogfight, its turning radius widens from 90 to 110 meters. And the time it takes to reach cruising altitude increases as the climb rate is reduced from 8.5 meters per second to 7.5 meters per second. So every key performance metric is degraded. There is a reason for these sacrifices. The probability of surviving a single berth from 450 cal machine guns of a Wildcat increases from a dismal 5% for the baseline zero to a far more viable 45% for the up-armored variant. So how does this dynamic play out in a direct combat scenario against its primary adversary, the F4F Wildcat? Diving attack was the Wildcat's preferred tactic, and its kill probability against the standard zero was around 75%. Against the armored variant, that might drop tree fold to just 25%. Conversely, in a turning dog fight, the baseline zero had distinct advantage, requiring 17.5 seconds to get on the Wildcat's tail. The up armored version might require 35 seconds for proper positioning, doubling the time and effectively seeding zero's most decisive advantage. These tactical realities would have profound strategic consequences. Using the Battle of the Coral Sea as a model, the up-armored Zero's reduced range would force the Japanese carrier groups closer to the American fleet. This proximity leads to earlier detection by scout planes, allowing for a faster, more coordinated American strike. Consequently, when the attack comes, the less maneuverable Zero's would struggle to form an effective combat air patrol, leaving Shokaku and Zuikaku more exposed to heavy damage. So, was it a sensible trade-off? While many elite Japanese pilots would have been saved in individual encounters, they would lose the very qualities that made the Zero a strategic weapon, including its exceptional range and unparalleled agility. It would have become a more survivable and also a mediocre fighter. Japanese engineers were masters of shedding every possible gram of weight. They used advanced, lightweight aluminum alloys and designed airframes that were strong enough for sharp maneuvers, resulting in airplanes that had little to no structural redundancy. This obsessive focus on lightness was the key to achieving their early war goals. Thank you for watching and please support my work by subscribing and purchasing my ebooks. You can find the links in my bio description or by searching for Adrian Langsford on Amazon.